So welcome everybody to the special TechSoup hosted online discussion, how to use the summer to prepare your organization for grant seeking. I'm Aretha Simons, a webinar producer here at TechSoup, and I'll be your host today, but really I'm not gonna be the speaker. I'm so delighted to have our speaker here with us today, Dahlia. I'm gonna say it wrong because it's right at the tip of my tongue, but I'm gonna mess it up. So Dahlia, say your last name for me again. Masachi. I was going to say that, but I was going to say Versace. So we got it now. Dahlia Masachi. Everybody got it. Dahlia is an amazing, I love her energy. She is an amazing woman that empowers nonprofits of all sizes to craft strategy and tactics for successful grant writing and management. She served over 25 years as a writer, an editor, a trainer, and a writing coach. And she's helped raise millions of dollars in grants on a wide range of um, social and economic, excuse me, environmental issues. She's an award-winning author. Her book is called Writing to Make a Difference, 25 Powerful Techniques to Boost Your Community Impact. She's also the instructor for TechSoup Grant Writing and Management Course Track. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. Currently, everyone here is on mute. Um, I would love if you have a question, type it in the Q&A and Dahlia will ask you at the end. Otherwise, feel free to engage in the chat room. Um, a lot of you have some of the answers to these courses because you've been through some grant writing courses or some grant writing problem solving. So feel free to engage with each other in the chat room. This is being recorded. It will be available within 24 hours for everyone who has registered. Also, as soon as we finish the webinar, there's gonna be a short survey. And when I say short, I mean like four questions. So please take the time to answer the four questions so we can better serve you. Dahlia, I'm so happy you're here with us today. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. The stage is all yours. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Aretha. You're welcome. And uh, let's see, yeah, here we are. Okay, mm -hmm. how to use the summer to prepare your organization for grant seeking. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so I know your organization is probably eager to attract some grant money to help support your good work, and that's what grants are there for. But are you really ready to take on all that's involved in grant seeking? After all, if you're not really ready to enter the grant world, you will just waste a lot of time, energy, and maybe even money. I've seen many nonprofit organizations make the mistake of not preparing properly and suffering the consequences. So you need to know what you're getting into, what to expect along the way, and what information, people, and other resources you're going to need to be successful. I want to make sure that you're ready and able to take this on, and today's webinar will introduce you to the grant world. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, no, nope, don't, don't go yet. Sorry, Aretha. <laughs> I forgot. I want to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing today with the agenda. So we'll first cover four things to consider about the grant world before taking the plunge. Um, then we'll move on to eight information essentials, what I call it, the information essentials. Those are the real things that you will need to have when you're going into the grant seeking mode. Then we'll look at your grant team and their skills and resources. And when I say grant team, I'm talking about a team of folks who come together to work on grants. We'll talk about that. And then finally, when you're ready, when you have all that kind of set up, then I'm going to preview what I call the grant roadmap. And I'll say a lot more about that in a, in a little bit. So let's go to the next slide now, Aretha. Yes, OK. So this is just a little bit about me. Um, Aretha shared some of this already. My book, again, is called Writing to Make a Difference, 25 Powerful Techniques to Boost Your Community Impact, pictured here. Um, I've also edited and or contributed to nine books, nine other books. And I was actually in your shoes too. Uh, a while ago, I served as the founding director of Bay Area International Development Organizations, or BEDO. And let's go to the next slide. Okay, the other thing that uh, Aretha mentioned about me is that I teamed up with TechSoup to create the popular on-demand course track called Grant Writing and Management. 
shown here, today's webinar is based on that course track and it features a preview of some of the actual screenshots from the course. That grant writing and management course track is comprised of five courses, as you see here, and they work together to form a starter kit for grant success. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so the course track con contains all the tools you'll need to start or expand your grant seeking work. And the first tool, as you see here, involves knowing what to expect from the grant world. Next, please. Okay, so let's talk about four things to consider before you take the plunge into the grant seeking world. You should know that not all grants are good for you. You might be surprised. Before diving in, I suggest that you first get clear about the difference between a grant that can be helpful to your organization and one that actually doesn't do you any favors. Pursuing a grant strategy is a major endeavor and you wanna go in with your eyes wide open. Now is a great time this summer to really think about how these four things relate to the work you, that you hope to fund. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so let's look at grant limitation number one. And that is that grants generally take up to six to 12 months to be awarded after you apply. And that's not counting the time it takes to prepare your application. In fact, good preparation or otherwise known as grant writing is quite time consuming itself. So recently we have seen a little bit of a difference here um, because of COVID-19. Some, some grant makers have started giving COVID-19 grants and you might even have received one. Um, they usually, they're considered emergency or rapid response grants. And those usually have shorter turnaround times, as you can imagine, but that is a rarity. So I would not count on that kind of timeline to, to be true for you as you go into grant seeking. Now, of course, six to 12 months is probably going to be too long to wait if you've got an urgent project, right? Sometimes board members or even executive directors are unfamiliar with grant seeking and they may think, hey, Grants offer a quick and easy way to, to fund us. Let's go for it. But that's actually generally not the case. It's usually not quick and easy as they, they would hope for it to be, but it's not quite there. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, grant limitation number two is that grant makers often change their priorities and they can be unreliable. Some people call it the flavor of the month club. You don't want your organization to become dependent on only one or two grants because they could go out of fashion next year and then you're going to be in trouble. You can protect your organization's well-being by having many different sources of income in case any of them suddenly slow down or dry up. And those other sources of income might include things like major individual donors or events or fees for services you provide or social enterprises you run. So any grant strategy should be part of a much larger fundraising plan. Okay, next slide, please. So grant limitation number three is that grants are only temporary and they have no guarantee of continuing. So you, from your point of view, you want your organization to be sustainable, right? You want to have, so you're going to have to develop a strategy to ensure that you survive or thrive past the duration of any specific grant you attract. While grants can and should be part of the mix, don't get me wrong, they can and should be part of the mix, you can't expect them to be anything other than a short-term fix for a year or two. So if they end up being long-term, and sometimes they do, that's an awesome thing and you'll be pleasantly surprised, but don't plan on that. So living, and I like to think of living grant to grant is kind of like living paycheck to paycheck if you don't have a guaranteed job. It's not a very good idea if you can help it, right? Okay, and number, uh, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, this is limitation number four. And limitation number four is grants are actually not free money. 
Uh, sorry if I've just burst someone's bubble here, but they're not. There's a lot of work involved in seeking and managing different types of grants. Your organization has to decide if it's worth dedicating the time, effort, and other resources you need in exchange for the possible cash from a grant. In addition, some grants come with strings attached, and you have to consider the agreement you're making to accept that money from any particular funder. An example might be um, a funder who demands too much work in exchange for a small grant that will only partially cover your expenses. Next, please. Okay, so now that you know kind of what you're dealing with when it comes to grants, let's talk about what it takes to show funders that your organization is well positioned to seek and manage grants. And I call this the eight information essentials that you'll need at your fingertips. The idea here is to prepare to show that you are worthy of a grant maker's investment. Think about it. If you were considering making an investment of any kind, you probably would be looking for a good return on your investment, right? I would. <laughs> um, you need to show that your organization is credible and well run and able to use a grant effectively. I think you'll find as we go through the rest of today's webinar that as a grant writer or a grant seeker, you will need to know a lot about your organization. Next slide. Okay, the first thing you'll need of the eight information essentials, the first thing is an official nonprofit tax status. And hopefully most or all of you on the webinar today already have this. But if you don't, I'll just explain it a little bit. You're going to need either your own nonprofit status, or if you're not yet a separate nonprofit, you're going to need a fiscal sponsor that agrees to administratively sponsor your organization in exchange for a fee. At a minimum, you'll need to have certifications on the federal and state levels, and some areas require a county or city business license or other documentation. So check, check your local area. And FYI, some grant makers only are interested in organizations that have been officially in existence for at least a few years. So if your organization is younger than that, you may need to wait to approach those specific funders. So make sure you read the information before you think about, think about uh, approaching those funders. But there are many others out there, so don't worry about it if that's true for you. Okay, let's move on. To the next slide. Uh, can you go up one, Arika? Yeah, number two. Okay. The second thing you'll need is you'll want to make sure your organization has a clear, unique mission. And those are two key words there clear and unique. Think about how your organization makes a special or unique role in your field. If your mission statement could describe any other organization that is similar to yours, you probably want to think again, because you, you really need a mission that stands out and is different from other organizations. You will need to clarify what, set, what you set out to do in your community in terms so clear that anyone can understand what you're saying. But you're not going to use any kind of jargon or anything that's kind of cryptic. So periodically revisit your mission to make sure it continues to be relevant and inspiring, even as times and circumstances change. And I'm sure you know what I mean when I talk about times and circumstances change. We've just gone through a big one of those. Next, next slide, please. Okay, number three, you're going to need an active, financially supportive board of directors. Now, of course, you're thinking, oh, yeah, we already have a board of directors. Most likely you do, but how active are they? Do they meet regularly and do they all contribute financially in a meaningful way? Okay. Also, are they connected to the community that you serve? All of these are really important questions that funders are going to want to know. So it's best to have a good variety of folks on your board who are familiar with various parts of your organization. If your board also includes some current or former clients, 
and it's representative of the ethnic and socioeconomic communities you serve, you're already off to a great start. On number three. All right, let's move on to number four on the next slide. Okay, number four is you're going to need the appropriate financial information, right? You will need to be able to produce several financial documents for funders, and that includes budgets, expense and revenue reports, IRS filings, balance sheets, and the list goes on. So you also need to show that you're you also need to show that you're on solid financial ground. Even if you're just starting out. Oh, we're still on number four. Uh, can you go back to number four, Lisa? One more slide up. Uh, trying to get to number four. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, let's see where what where was I? Um, okay, so I was talking about how it's important to make sure that you can show that you're on solid financial ground, even if you're just starting out as an organization. So if you're in debt of any sort, you will most likely need to get out of that debt before you can seek new grants. And if you're behind on IRS filings or if you haven't passed a recent financial audit, those issues need to be cleared up first. On a related note, funders want to know that you have multiple sources of support. So you need to be able to show a solid history of financially sustaining yourself. And that's true even if, even if you're new. So um, you need to be able to show some sort of community support to keep your head above water. That may even look like um, community volunteers or in-kind support, some, some kind of support. You know, it would be nice to have some financial support too, to, to be able to show to funders. Okay, now we're ready for the next slide. Yeah. After all, no one wants to pour money into a sinking ship. Right, so you want to get your ship upright and ready to roll. Okay, number, let's go to the next slide. All right, number five. So number five is you're going to need to be prepared to propose at least one priority program with a budget for that program. Now you may already know that the vast majority of grants are given for specific programs or projects for only one year at a time. And pursuing that kind of funding requires that you are clear about your own priorities over the next year or more, but at least one year. With that in mind, you'll need to divide your work into specific units. Um, usually we call them programs or projects, right? With realistic expectations for a one year period. That's really important, the one year period. These bite-sized chunks need to be centered on your organization's strengths or core competencies. So you're not going to be doing some kind of tangential work. You're going to be really focusing on your strengths and core competencies as an organization. If your organization is very new, you may only have one program to start with, and that's okay, no problem. But even in that case, I encourage you to break it down into smaller pieces. Remember that each program or project needs a realistic budget, that is the money you will need to run it and where you expect to find those funds. Okay, let's take a, a breath here because that was a lot of program planning that has to happen <laughs> before you're ready to pursue grants. And this summer is a great time to do that planning. Okay, let's move on to number six. There you go. The sixth, and sixth information essential is your method of quantitative or qualitative evaluation. Funders want to know basically what's working and what's not, right, with your organization. They want to know the quantitative results of your work, such as how many people you served, or, or how many how many animals you saved, et cetera, and the quality of the impact you made. That is, how big of a difference did you make with your work? Funders often call these short and long-term measurable outcomes. Okay, let's move on to the next, next slide, number seven, right? 
Then there's the, the seventh essential item you'll need, and that is a track record of success. Now, if you're new, you probably don't have a track record yet, right? But I'm hoping that you'll at least have the right leadership to make success happen in the future. You're going to need to be clear on how your organization and or your project has already made a positive difference in your community. That is, what results have you already seen? And there are lots of ways to tell the story of your organization's past that can lead to a bright future. So that's what you want to focus on for number seven. And finally, the next slide shows us the eighth essential, which is a strategic plan of some kind. Now, even if you can't carry out a full-blown strategic planning process, your board and staff can at least envision a general outline of where you're headed over the, ne over the next one to three years. Now, it doesn't need to be fancy. You just need to demonstrate that your work is coherent and realistic in accomplishing your mission, given the context that you're working in. In the grant writing and management course track, we go much more in depth on these eight inform information essentials and in the course, I help you assess your organization and address any barriers you may face as you prepare for the grant seeking journey ahead. If you feel like your organization is not quite ready with all of these eight information essentials, no need to worry. That's why you're preparing now, right? Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. Okay, clearly, as I just Kind of explained there's a lot to think about and plan for before starting your grant seeking journey and by now you've probably realized that producing and managing all of the eight information essentials takes a lot of time and talent let's discuss the major skill sets you will need to have on your grant writing and management team and yes i said team because grant writing and management is a team effort or a team sport it will require you as the grant professional to have regular access to the appropriate people on your team. So you'll need folks to help at different points in the process. And now we're going to take a look at what they'll be doing, all the people on your team. Okay, so to get started, you'll need a program specialist to outline the vision for the prioritized plan or project that you're looking to be funded. That person will be very involved in creating and reviewing proposal drafts for content accuracy. Okay, next slide. You'll also need a community needs assessor to help establish why the program or project is so crucial in the first place. That critical piece should embrace as much community involvement as possible. After all, who would be better to know the issues than community members themselves? Next slide. As the program is being developed, don't forget to include an evaluator. That is someone to determine a feasible way to track and measure the program's effectiveness. Once the program is funded, you'll need to have someone monitor the implementation and evaluation of it. And when it's time to report your progress to the funder, you're gonna need information about the project status and outcomes. Next slide. Don't forget to find someone to collect stories of clients who benefit from the project. Many funders these days will want to know that information. And next, we're talking about the financials. And of course, financials are super important to funders, right? So those numbers need to be very accurate and up to date. Next slide. Throughout the process, you're likely to need folks to provide detailed administrative information or assistance, and that often includes human resources, accounting, legal, technical, clerical, et cetera. And finally, while all that is being done, you'll need someone to research appropriate funding opportunities and someone to be a schmoozer or a relationship cultivator to initiate and maintain relationships with those funders. There's one more piece here that I wanna share, and that is 
a role that needs to be filled by the executive director or the CEO. And often this piece is kind of overlooked, so I want to emphasize it. Um, that, that role is the role of strategic supporter of your grant seeking work. This person will provide the resources and inspiration to facilitate the grant success. So without their strong support and vision, the grant team is going to lack direction, priorities, and motivation. So this person, the ED or CEO, is very important as part of the grant team. Whew, take a breath here. That sounds like a lot of people, and it might be, depending on your organization's size. You know, if it's small, that's, that's one thing. But if it's large and you have lots of people to play these different roles, that's, that's a great thing, too. Now, while most team roles are going to be played by staff members, you may also call upon outside people like experts or collaborators or key board members or maybe even volunteers to play some of these roles. Also, remember that a single person may take on more than one role, and that's probably been your experience. On the other hand, more than one person can share any given role. Next slide. Okay, so once you've prepared your organization for grant seeking by considering the four grant limitations, gathering the eight information essentials, and assembling your grant team, next slide, you are ready to go on your journey. You got the green light. Okay, next slide. While there are many parts of the grant seeking process that are up to funders, let's focus today on the steps that we grant seekers can control. Here you see the grant roadmap that we use to guide us through the grant writing and management course track. It shows the typical grant seeking process. And you'll see on the, on the very beginning here, we start with the first three steps, which can be done in any order or even simultaneously. Here we focus on learning about funders and how to craft a grant proposal that speaks to them. Next slide. We go through the entire process of planning and drafting the various components of a grant proposal. Next. And that includes the narrative or the text portion, the budget, and then all of the additional administrative pieces that, are com that complete the grant proposal package. In the course track, you will also begin to research your most likely funders and learn to customize your grant proposals to their specific interests. Next slide. Now, once you have a solid draft, we will go through an extensive mock review to make sure that your draft is complete. Next slide. And the grant writing management and grant writing and management course track includes over 30 downloads. And I'm going to show you a few examples of what that looks like. So we have a lot of hands on exercises um, and worksheets. And yes, then this and continuing with the worksheets, lots of hands on type of work um, that I give you. And then we have a lot of samples. And for example, here's a sample of a uh, request for a proposal or RFP. And let's look at the next slide. It's another sample. This is a sample cover letter for a proposal package. Let's look at the next slide. And here's the sample budget for the program that we use. We use a, a sample program throughout the grant writing and management course track. It's called the Elder Eats program. And here's the sample budget for it. Okay, let's, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, here's another sample that we use, the generic proposal narrative template. We fill that out. And then we have um, lots of other activities, kind of interactive activities on as part of the online course. Here's one example. Let's look at the next one. Yeah, here's another one. We have a pop, some pop quizzes in there to make sure that you're learning learning as we go okay move on let's go on to the next one uh-huh and then we also have lots of important resources um, that aren't technically part of the core the course you know the coursework that we're doing 
but we have important resources that you that are good for you to have as you move through this process. For example, this glossary. And let's move to the next slide. We also have transcripts of all of the courses and all of the modules in the courses, which is great because you can go back and uh, refer back to it. You can follow along. If you have some hearing impairments, you can also use the transcript instead of relying on the sound for the um, course track. Okay. Now, at, going back to the grant roadmap here, after you submit your grant proposal, which is step four, that's where you are on the grant roadmap, um, the funder's program officer, or what we call the PO on this grant roadmap, that's what PO stands for, the program officer will then get to work while you are going to remain available to them to answer any of their questions, right? Uh, when the funders board votes on whether or not to fund your proposal, then we're at step eight of the grant roadmap. And next slide. And at that point, we're hoping for a well-deserved win, right? Hopefully the board will vote us in and we get the grant. It's awesome. So at that point, we're at step nine on the grant roadmap. And the next slide. Uh, can you go back up one? Yeah, okay. So once the celebration is over, the grant writing and management course track will guide you through the final three steps on the grant on the grant uh, journey, and that is project implementation, reporting, and the possible renewal opportunities, opportunities that you'll find. And then the grant roadmap loops back to the beginning. And the good news is that each time you go through the grant roadmap, you will improve. And I'm going to just give you one second to look at this cartoon. Of course, sometimes grant proposals just don't get, get funded, right? They don't succeed and that's okay. We will discuss what may have happened and how you can learn from the rejection if that happens to you. Next slide. Okay, so before I take a few questions, I want to leave you with a few goodies. And first is, uh, as I mentioned, TechSoup and I uh, worked together on this on this uh, grant writing and management course track. And we're offering a 20% discount on the course track to anyone watching this webinar, either live or recorded. So um, if you're watching this, you know, in a few days or weeks or months, um, we are actually not months because the discount expires on June 30th, 2021. So make sure you get in on the deal before it expires in a couple of weeks. Okay, next slide. And a few other resources that I wanted to share with you. You'll see on the next slide that I have several articles on the TechSoup blog, and they explore um, some of the topics that I can that I cover in the course track. Also, just out today, there's a new blog post. It's not even on the slide yet because it's just coming out today. It's called How to Build a Proven, Simple, and Easy Funder-Friendly Budget. So that will be up on the TechSoup blog probably right after this webinar. Um, I also host a free series twice a month on Facebook Live, and I call it Ask Dahlia Live, where I answer your questions about grant writing and management. And the series runs every second and fourth Wednesday of the month at 12 noon Pacific time. So that's 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, recordings are all available online. And you can also follow me on the next slide. Um, my business is called Writing for Community Success. And we are all over the web <laughs> um, on several social media platforms. You can look for us at Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, and there you'll hear all about the Ask Dahlia Live series on Facebook Live and the many other resources that I offer. And next slide. Finally, you are welcome to visit my website and sub subscribe to my free monthly newsletter. You can also contact me directly via that website. So. Uh, here it is, writingtomakeadifference.com.
And now I'm happy to open it up to questions and let's see what you got for me. Okay, great job, Dahlia. Thank you so much. So I'm going to go over to the chat. I know there's some people that um, put some comments in there and some people came a little late. Um, there was one comment that um, a young lady said that she thought maybe this was for beginners, you know, this webinar. Um, although I believe I go to all types of webinars, you can learn from, you know, all of them. So what's your feedback on that, Dahlia? Yes. Well, um, today's webinar is just introductory, right? It's introducing you to the types of things that you need to do to prepare for grant seeking. And that's usually true for a lot of beginners, but even, even folks who've been around the block for a while, they, it's a good idea to kind of go back and just cover the basics, right? Make sure you've, you've got everything covered. Um, in addition, the grant writing and management course track is a starter kit. So it's largely for beginners, but again, if you've been doing grant writing for a while, um, it probably will provide some insights for you that you may not have heard of or may not have thought of before. Very good. And let's just put the course link back in the chat room for those who are interested in taking the course. Also, there is a 20% discount. And um, there's a comment from Sam, when meeting for the first time with a potential grantor, what are some of the questions you should ask? Uh, very good question. And that is a, kind of a whole module in the course. So I couldn't like, you know, share all that information out. It's quite extensive. Um, but I can tell you that when you're first meeting, you want to go into the meeting having done your homework. So you're going to do a lot of research on that funder before you meet with them. So you're not going to ask basic questions that you could have found out on a website. That's a very common mistake that people that grant seekers make when they speak with a funder, they ask them things that they should already know. So kind of be aware for, for that. Um, given that once you kind of know some background, I would suggest thinking about or thinking about ways that you can ask kind of deeper questions like can you be a little bit more specific about this program area that you fund um, I have a specific question about you know some aspect of it that would be a great thing to show the funder that you already know about them and you've done your homework um, you also might want to ask them things like are you mo most interested in general operating support or are you interested in specific programs? Can you tell me you know, a little bit more about that in detail? So basically the questions that you ask the funder should be kind of higher level and not just basic. Okay, I'm gonna go to the Q&A section. If you have a question, it would be very helpful to type it in the Q&A section because now the questions are coming in the chat room so everything's moving pretty fast. Um, Mindy wants to know, will you be sharing the slides to this presentation? Yes, they, I believe um, they will, the recording for this presentation will be available, right, Aretha? Yes, the recording for the presentation will be available in, in a few hours. Great. And Michelle, how do you find grants to apply for? Are there databases or other places where you should look to find grants worth applying to? Great question. And yes, that's actually all of uh, grant writing and management 203 is focused specifically on that question again whole field <laughs> it's not something i can really answer in just a minute or two but i can tell you that yes there are lots of databases website research um, additional resources that you can use to find out a, not only about the funders but to do research on them because it's really important to vet them and figure out which of this whole universe of funders, which ones are gonna be best for me. Okay, great. And the Mount Hood Hospice asks, how would you, or how would HIPAA laws impact asking for a grant? Um, HIPAA is about uh, health healthcare privacy. And that, that's a good question. My guess is that you're probably from a healthcare organization. Um, so yes, you're going to have to protect the privacy of 
whoever appears in your grant proposal, right? So you're not going to use real names of people. Um, you are not going to uh, divulge any information about them or maybe even about the specific uh, community or group that you're that you're working with that would violate their privacy. So if that's a concern, I think it's important to kind of to look at the HIPAA laws in comparison to what exactly you're doing because you, you don't want to have any problems in that area. Okay, great. Brandy says, can you clarify by what is meant by quote unquote active financially supportive board? Our board members are volunteers, very active and contribute with their time, but not necessarily wallets. Okay, okay. Good question. Um, contrib being active and contributing your time is very important. So that's a great first step. I would suggest that you think about kind of two ways, usually people um, consider financial contributions in two ways. Either the first one is directly from them, right? If they want, if they're able to give some kind of financial contribution that is meaningful to them. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like a dollar amount, a specific dollar amount. It can just be whatever is meaningful to them to give, that counts. The second way that you, that some people do this is if they're not able to financially con contribute themselves, then they are able to approach others who can contribute financially. So they either give the money themselves or they get donations or contributions as part of their board service. Okay, Karen asks, um, you mentioned some links while you were doing the presentation you're referring to some documents. She wants to know, are they available on your website or can you give a site link to some of those documents? Okay, um, the documents that I showed are all in the course track. So those, those were just a few of the samples of the over 30 downloaded documents that are included in the course track. Okay, this, I think this answers the question. The next question they wanted um, you to go over some of the templates that you showed earlier. Again, this is recorded, so you'll see this on the replay. And Patrice says, it seems that you need to apply for a grant far in advance when you might actually have to have an event scheduled. How do you plan ahead for funding when you don't have a formal plans, when you don't have formal plans? Okay, um, planning is really important. And you're right, um, applying for a grant means that you're gonna have to wait for a while, right, to go through the grant seeking process. That whole grant roadmap takes time. So if you're if you're thinking that you're going to have some work that you need to do in a, in a short period of time, you don't want to go with a grant. Most likely you want to look at other sources of income for that. Um, but it's, it's not a good idea to go into the grant seeking world without a plan. You need to have some kind of planning. Mm -hmm. Um, April says, if I'm working internationally, do I need certifications? Um, my guess is that you're based in the US, but you work internationally. I don't know exactly what you mean. Um, but yes, you're going to need certifications of some sort. At least you'll need to be considered a nonprofit within the US. You may, depending on the type of work that you're doing internationally, you may also need some kind of certifications internationally. Um, I, I don't know enough of the details of your situation to really be able to, to answer specifically, unfortunately. Okay, Dahlia, I'm going to prepare this next question um, for you, but would you type your link, your Facebook, somebody want your Facebook group link, can you put it in the chat room while I kind of um, put okay. these other questions up here? Um, an anonymous attendee asked, um, this is kind of one of the same question. Um, do you have any narrative examples? Um, they learn best by examples. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Um, just one moment here. Take your time. Take your time. The, uh, link yes. here. And I think she um, she did show some examples that she would provide in the course. Yes. Yeah. All those samples are are just those are kind of a, a portion of the types of um, documents that I include in the course. So there are lots of samples in there. And they also want to know, um, can you list the top grant databases that you use? 
Um, yes, we actually that's one of the downloads is is kind of a list of, of that those kind of databases. But I would recommend if you're just starting out, especially you're going to want to look at the Foundation Center. They have a great online database. Um, it's called Foundation Directory Online. That is available for a fee, but also you can use it for free if you go to one of their cooperating libraries around the country, and there are several hundred of them. So it's likely that in your city or in your larger area, there's going to be a library that carries it, that subscribes to it. So if you go to the library, you're able to use their database for free. So we I would recommend that one. Sorry. And we also have here at TechSoup Grant Station. So if you go to TechSoup, you can get access to Grant Station for a fraction of the cost than any other grant database here. So uh, Grant Station is one of our partners that allow our nonprofits to have access to, you know, research, their sample grant proposals, and so much more. It's called Grant Station. Okay. So the Seed of Life, where do you find? Uh, local, national, and international grants. Um, I mean, is there somewhere to sign up? So I gave you one example, um, Grant Station, and um, Dahlia can give you others. Yeah, the, um, those those are two great resources, Grant Station and Foundation Center. Um, there are there are several others. There's not really a place that you sign up to get all of the grant uh, opportunities. There are several places that you would want to want to check in yes and anna um uh, and excuse me she's i'll put a link here um she said why hasn't this been updated since 2017 she's talking about the council of nonprofits.org um it's a resource grant list and she put the council foundation she puts their um, tool resource for grant research in the um, chat area thank you so much um Mito, if i hope i'm saying that right how do you find the right grant on the nih.org. Everything is so research oriented um, for fitness and child obesity grants. Um, same for grants.org. So basically how to navigate those two uh, very technical websites, nih and grants.gov, which I know I'm waiting for you to answer. Great. <laughs> those are very, yeah, it's kind of, kind of a, a maze, right? Um, I would suggest, I, I can't give you that information right now. Um, I would suggest looking on their website and seeing if they have like a, a tutorial or some kind of information that's specific to their database. There are so many databases out there um, that it's likely that either they will have a tutorial or just go online and ask that question there's likely to be someone who's been in your specific shoes and they may be able to give you some direction. Yeah, it's like when you're going to those, when you put in your keyword and you find the grant that you're matched for, it's yeah. basically a lot of reading, a lot of reading, but there's yeah. also a contact. There's always a point of contact, either an email or phone number, most likely email now or the website where you can reach out to them to ask them questions and that can kind of help you narrow your search through the grants.gov and NIH. I know those are monsters because they gave you millions of dollars so they're not going to make it easy for you. Right and you may need to contact them more than once. Mm -hmm. Just exactly. FYI. <laughs> exactly. So um, somebody put are there any tips that can make your um, grant RFP stand out? Um, I, I think you're talking about an, a response to an RFP because an RFP is a request for a proposal. So your response to the RFP is your proposal. And yes, there are many ways and we cover many of them in the grant writing and management course track. Okay. Um, the Mount Hood Hospice asked again, they, they want to thank you for your response. And they said, um, if I'm able to share specific information because of HIPAA laws, would the funder use that as a strike against me? Um, so they would give me money or they would give money to a different applicant because they could share specific information. Oh, I don't think so. I think it, it, if that's your situation, then you could just be very clear in your proposal. You know, come out and say, I, we are unable to share specific information due to HIPAA laws, right? So you would just, go out there and, and be very clear about what you're doing and your limitations that you're working under. 
I think funders will should be understanding of that. If they yeah. fund in your area, they're going to be familiar with HIPAA laws. Exactly. And and I, I can't see them asking for specific information on patients or clients because I've no. seen um, grants uh, or been on grant review boards where it was victims of sexual trauma and they would never put the information. They will always say the client or the victim. So they refer to them as that. Exactly. Um, Kimberly asked, um, is the course self-guided? Would there be any live sessions or hands-on with you, Dahlia? Good question. It is self-guided. It's all on demand. So there are no live sessions with me. Um, it's, it's a series of videos of me and interactive sessions. So what I showed you, like the pop quiz and the, the hands-on exercises, all of those are you being involved with the course, but not in a live way. So the good part, the good thing about that is you can do it at your own leisure, right? You can do it at 3 a.m. if you wanted, to, if you wanted to. Doesn't matter what time, whatever time works for you is the time that you do it. Okay, good. I'm still in the Q&A section. If you have a question, please type it in the Q&A section. I love how you all are engaging in yeah, the chat room. Great. I see Anne answering a lot of questions and sharing her, you know, experiences and knowledge. And Jen, thank you so much. So I'm going back to Elizabeth's question. She said, please share your thoughts on grants for operating costs. Okay. Um, just so folks know, general operating costs tend to be for the entire organization, right? They're not limited or restricted to a specific program or project. Those grants are the most highly coveted, right? Because they're kind of anything goes, here's the money, use it in the best way that you can. And we are not gonna, we're not gonna nitpick you. Um, so those are highly coveted, but at the same time, they're also the rarest. <laughs> they're the hardest to get because they're not they're not a lot of them out there. Um, the good news is that in the past, I would say five plus years, more more and more grant makers are getting hip to the fact that oh yeah, we probably should be offering more grant more general operating support grants. So there is some growth in that area, um, and that's really good, especially now that funders are in the past year or so funders are getting more and more interested in racial equity. And those tend to be, the grants can be more general operating support or, e, or capacity building, which is another kind of general operating support grant that we talked about. Awesome. Um, Yvonne says, do you provide a decision matrix for evaluating the fitness of a grant opportunity? That is a good question. Um, I showed a slide called the mock review. I, I don't know if you remember it. You may want to go back to the slide. Um, yes, I call it the mock review, and it's an eight-page matrix of sorts of things that, that you would want to go back through your proposal and make sure that everything is being covered um, from, a, from a funder's perspective. So you're going to kind of put on the hat of a funder and go through a mock review using that, that document that I have in the course. Okay, last question in the Q&A and then I'll go to the chat room and we'll be wrapping up. Okay. Stephanie want to know, do you have any advice on foundation slash grant research management software programs? Um, she says, you know, it's better for her to go to the library, do her research, but then she's managing doing everything by hand. Yes, good question. Um, I'm not an expert in software, so that probably would be a good TechSoup question. I think TechSoup has some grant management software in its catalog. Maybe you know more about that, Aretha? Yes, we do. There's several. Um, there's Salesforce. Um, there's another one that I won't come to my mind, but if you go to the software, you'll see it'll say CRM or Customer Relations Management. Okay, great, great questions. Great question. Thank you so much. Um, Marjorie says, can you tell us more about your Facebook Live? Sure. Um, it's called Ask Dahlia Live, and it's twice a month, uh, second and fourth Wednesdays at noon on uh, Pacific time. We, we just started it uh, about a month and a half ago, so it's, it's new. So far, we have three episodes up there, and it's basically me answering all kinds of questions from folks about grant writing and management 
from different perspectives. It could be brand new folks. It could be people who've been in the, in the grant seeking game for a while. Um, we cover all kinds of topics and it runs about 10 minutes. So it's not, it's not uh, like a, a big imposition on your time. It's at noon Pacific time. So for those West Coast folks like me, you can kind of listen during lunchtime. So that's, that's what it is. And I encourage you to check it out. Um, my company, again, is called Writing for Community Success. So that's the, the Facebook page where you can find it. Great. Dahlia, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank everybody who came. You could have been doing anything today, but you chose to come here to get some tools to help your nonprofit and to help the community mostly. Um, would you do me a favor before you leave? Type in the chat room one of the takeaways that you learned from today. Lots of people are saying thank you. I saw lots of thank yous in the chat room where they say, like, this is my first time attending a grant webinar. This is so helpful. So thank you. Um, John saying thank you. Jasmine saying thank you so much. We appreciate that. We appreciate the feedback. Again, as soon as you close this, then the um, survey will pop up on your screen. Everybody's saying thank you. Great. Yeah, and that that was a great idea, Aretha, to ask folks to type in kind of the the one thing that you're taking away from today. That 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 would be great for me to know what's what's important to. Yeah, um, someone says so much writing for grants, and I had no clue regarding that. Thank you for sharing. You're um, welcome. Eric said he loved the steps approach for getting grant ready. Awesome. Everybody's saying this is informative. Thank you. Small details, which are very important that you mentioned. Very good. Oh, yeah. um, April said understanding the process more. Jasmine says I'm excited to try out these example documents. Awesome. Debbie says thank you. First time again, brand new nonprofit. So it was overwhelming, but it was it's a great start being here today. Good job. Thank you, everybody being prepared. Lots of great comments. So thank you, everyone. Biggest takeaway, have a team. Yes, right. and make sure you have support. The team approach, yeah. Yes, for, long, long, for, for the long haul. That's right. Yes, awesome, awesome. Again, thank you, everybody. Um, make sure you sign up for our other um, webinars. Um, ED Chat is coming up. ED Chat, which is Executive Director's Chat with TechSoup. Come on, join us, and we'll see you on Thursday. I always say to everybody who's in a nonprofit world, you're busy taking care of everybody else. Make sure mm -hmm. you take time to take care of yourself. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming, everybody. Bye for now. <laughs>